The black hole information paradox is a huge challenge to kind of all of physics. Because it sits at this intersection, the way we understand this paradox is when it comes to black holes, obviously, and especially the surfaces of black holes, and specifically Hawking radiation. And Hawking radiation is uh, exists, our knowledge of Hawking radiation comes about from an intersection between general relativity, which is how we understand black holes to exist in the first place, and quantum mechanics, which is our understanding of the very, very small. And when you put these together, we actually have no answer for what happens fully when quantum mechanics meets general relativity. Instead, we have these like little corners and, and ideas and hints here and there, things like Hawking radiation, which tells us that black holes emit radiation. Black holes are not 100% black. They're just a tiny, tiny bit glowy, very, very slow. It takes like 10 to 100 years for a black hole to evaporate, but the principle is there. And as the black holes emit radiation, they lose energy, they lose mass, and eventually they disappear. So black holes don't exist forever because of this radiation. And we understand this radiation by attempting to combine general relativity with quantum mechanics and have any sense at all. And the black hole information paradox comes up in this because if black holes swallow information... If they swallow stuff, they're swallowing information, but then the radiation that comes out, the Hawking radiation that comes out, doesn't care about any of that radiation, or any of that information. It just doesn't care. It just doesn't care. And then the black hole goes away. We've lost information. We've lost information. As far as we can tell, information is preserved throughout the universe. You can neither create nor destroy information. There is just information it shouldn't be destroyed and yet here we are at the boundaries of quantum mechanics and general relativity and we're destroying information left and right what's going on how do we resolve this paradox well maybe information really does get destroyed maybe what we think of is of as information isn't totally accurate maybe our fundamental understanding, like our, our, our guts and our equations that are telling us that information is preserved, maybe they're just flat out wrong. Maybe that's only an approximation. If, I mean, yeah, this is a possibility, but if it's a possibility, you basically have to rewrite all of physics, which has happened before, but it's not exactly comfortable and we're not exactly going to jump there right off the bat. So it's an option, but we're going to leave that to the side. Maybe, maybe another resolution of the paradox is that Hawking radiation does care about the information that was put into the black hole. That if you put a throw a book into a black hole versus throw a cat into a black hole, the Hawking radiation of the book black hole is going to look tiny, tiny, tiny bit different than the Hawking radiation from the black hole with a cat thrown in it. It's just going to be slightly, slightly different. Okay, this way, I mean, information is preserved. Hawking radiation is still a thing. The challenge is that... Um, while it sounds nice, this sounds like a great and easy resolution, We there's no like math to back it up. We can't hack at it. We've been hacking at this, this question for decades, and it's just there's we can't figure out how to do it. Like Hawking himself couldn't figure out how to do it. There, like You feel like, okay, this is the easiest, easiest path, but we can't do it. We don't, we don't have the mathematics actually tells us, oh, this is how the information actually gets preserved in Hawking radiation. We don't have it. So even though we'd like it, we don't have it. Maybe somehow the information that falls into a black hole gets sunk into a tiny little nugget at the center. That instead of a singularity at the center, there's just, there's something. We don't know what that would be, but, but that gets to encode all of the information. In order to make a something there at the center of a black hole, however, you have to invent new physics because we have no idea what's going on at the center of a black hole. 
And because we have no idea, you can't really say what that thing might be. So if you're able to fully unify quantum mechanics and general relativity, you might be able to say, oh, yeah, yeah, and there's not singularities in the center of the black hole, it's something else, and this is what it looks like, and this is where all the information is, and blah, blah, blah. But we don't have a unified picture of gravity and quantum mechanics, so good luck with that. Absent those, there's, of course, like a million zany ideas, like information getting floated into another universe or looping back in time. I mean, like, people are pretty desperate when you start introducing time loops and wormholes into your math uh, to, to resolve this paradox. But the paradox is a big deal. The paradox is a big deal because we feel like if we can answer it, we'll know some new physics. Think about that. Think about, the, like, the three kinds of solutions, to the paradox. Either information is not destroyed or information can be destroyed in our universe, in which case, brand new physics. Maybe information is preserved and Hawking radiation actually knows some of the past history of the black hole, in which case, new physics. Or information gets sunk down into the singularity and gets preserved and black holes don't get completely destroyed, in which case, new physics. That's why the black hole information paradox is so interesting because all possible resolutions to the paradox point in the direction of new physics. And we could really, really use some new physics one of these days. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really does help, really. And go to patreon.com slash pmsutter. There's a link floating around my head so that you can keep these shows going. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time.